Hi folks, I'm Gary Goldenfeld with High Desert Creativity. Today, we have the pleasure of being at Dominique Consley's studio. Dominique, thank you so much for having us. I grew up as a child in the Bay Area, and there, my parents would always take us to the beach. So every other weekend, literally every other weekend, we would camp, we would pack up our van and go camping at Mendocino, Fort Ross. Um, we would go to Monterey a lot, Santa Cruz. And so we were always at the beach. And I just remember like climbing cliffs as a six-year-old and just um, loving the ocean. Having musicians in my family, we always had people playing the piano. And we had two pianos growing up. So one was in the living room and one was in my parents' room. So if you walk down the hall um, in the middle of the day, you would hear someone practicing in this room and someone practicing in this room. So was, there was kind of always this cacophony of um, music happening in our home. And uh, my dad loved the blues. So we had, you know, all the great blues artists playing all the time. and. Um, we would go to a lot of band concerts to watch my brothers play, and uh, we'd go to jazz festivals, so we, we heard a lot of different types of music. And then um, growing up, we'd go to church in Hunter's Point in San Francisco, and it was a black gospel Catholic church. And so we heard a lot of um, gospel music and soul, and um, I just remember that being a wonderful experience. middle school I sort of acted out and I remember I <laughs> pierced my belly button and my older sister told on me and then I got grounded for three months so literally for three months I had no social interaction I couldn't call my friends I couldn't go out on the weekends and I was like 13 years old so it was a very like isolating time and so um, during the weekends, I just, I um, opened up a box of oil paints that we had around the house and I just painted. And so that's how I really, um, I would say I got some experience with artwork. In high school, I remember finding an image in a magazine. I think it was like National Geographic and I remember thinking like, okay, I'm going to try to translate this into paint on a piece of paper. And I was using tempera paint, which is a really cheap material. And I just loved the challenge of translating something I saw into something I made. And I decided that I wanted to go to a beach school uh, for my college uh, experience. And so uh, to get through chemistry class, I put a picture of Pepperdine University on my chemistry binder and I looked at that every single day and it helped me turn a D into a B minus and that pa I passed, got me through, I got into Pepperdine and everything changed. My life completely changed. I made it my personal goal to try to go to the beach every single day. It was just amazing to look out um, in between classes or walking down from my dorm and just to see a huge blue expanse and the sky and just the perspective of being up on a hill and looking at the ocean. It was transformative for me. When I was 19, I studied abroad in Thailand and I snorkeled a lot. I did some scuba diving there. Um, I really saw a lot of nature. I spent so much time watching little Christmas tree worms pop out of rocks. And I saw gorgeous coral, both in the daytime and at night. I saw sea turtles. I saw, um, I just spent a lot of time on the ocean floor looking up at this great, shimmering lid, looking at the moon at night, and it just, it just impacted me so much. It just made me love our world. I saw so much of it, and um, 
it made me care for it. Um, and people and the people who live all over the world I saw a lot of different cultures. I saw the way people lived both wealthy and poor. And um, that just made me fall in love with the world. And I wanted to be a part of describing it to people um, through my art. So with this painting behind me, that process actually started when I was traveling through India. When I was in India, I saw beautiful henna all over women, all over their hands. So I bought some of that when I was there and I tried it out actually on my artwork. And I noticed that it created these beautiful textures and you could actually do some very intricate line work, kind of like a, a line drawing that you do with a pen, but it actually created texture. When I got back from India, I had all of this just, oh my gosh, I was just so, inspired by the colors that I saw there and the textures and the line work and the patterns that I saw. Um, and that just sunk in, it sunk into me. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna actually mimic the process of coral and it's, um, coral is slow growing, um, coral is at risk in our environment, um, it's dying off year after year, so it became kind of like a, a focal point for me. Um, it underscored my love for the environment. It helped me talk about that with people because I would be talking about my art. And um, so my process for this piece included um, laying down a substrate of color, so the bright blue. The color blue is just extremely calming to me. It's my favorite color. It's the color that I'm most drawn to. I mixed a bunch of cement in a Ziploc bag, and then I just started frosting my painting. And then I would take uh, my puffy paint and layer it and layer it and layer it. And each layer took about 24 hours to dry, and I could do maximum three layers at a time. Um, without the paint falling in on itself or collapsing under its own weight. So there's about 25 layers on this piece and I worked on this piece over three years. Exactly that process of, I don't know what it will look like in the end, that's really what drives me um, to create abstract art. And that's really the difference between, for me, painting in abstraction versus painting in realism. With the realism paintings and the portraits I'll do and uh, pieces inspired by photography I've taken or seen, um, then with those kinds of pieces, I know where it's going. There's a finite ending. Um, the piece can be completed in steps and stages that I am aware of and in control of. But with an abstract piece, um, there's always the risk that it will never be finished because um, it could just keep going and tweaking and changing. And so that's why this piece took so long um, to complete. Central Oregon is a beautiful place to live. Just being surrounded by trees is like uh, just so refreshing. To create artwork and to explore Bend, I actually partnered with some amazing photographers who lived here. Dominique, now Bachelor, tell us about this. So I collaborated with photographer Pete Alport on this piece and um, I was scrolling through Instagram one day and I saw his work it came up on my feed and so I asked him if I could collaborate with him and paint um, his photograph and so this was really a way for me to explore bend um, through my paintbrush uh, I believe he took this shot from the top of Tumalo looking at Mount Bachelor and I really tried to um, add some of my own colors and my own textures to uh, 
you know, not just copy Pete, but really try to um, add something to it, some nuances, um, as well as sort of translate the experience of the photograph through paint. I love the way you did the, we'll call it the sunset in the back. What were you thinking? So that, that Alpenglow, that was present in the original photograph and I just kind of amped up the colors, made this beautiful gradient and it actually reminds me of like um, uh, Hiroshige or uh, a Japanese artist print that you'd see in the 1850s. For me, like painting each tree with um, like a, a four hair brush, like the tiniest possible brush you could think of, it was kind of my way of like dot, 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 like climbing these mountains. Um, I'm not an experienced hiker like he is, so my way of experiencing Bend is through art. So it's through photography, it's through um, recreating these gorgeous vistas uh, through oil paint. And so me climbing the mountain, I do that with my paintbrush and um, looking at the sunset through um, a painter's eye and kind of um, adding volume, adding you know touches of color here and there. That to me is how I explored Bend when I first got here. This is another piece that I created after I moved to Bend, to Central Oregon. And um, it came out of uh, going on hikes and walks and seeing the beautiful aspen trees that we have here. And I would see these eyes um, on the bark and the branches wherever there was a branch protruding from the aspen tree, there seemed to be an eye marking. And I just thought, oh, how cool would it be to create a whole collection of these pieces that um, focused on eyes. And um, eyes are so much fun to paint. They are the windows to the soul. They're so expressive. And so I thought it was um, a cool way to uh, connect with nature and to help others connect as well, um, to actually, um, anthropomorphize these trees and add um, some pattern work and details. So they're kind of like a street style, it kind of reflects my roots in Fresno during murals. And um, it also has some uh, glitz and gold kind of reminiscing of my time in Los Angeles and Malibu. I just love the aspen trees, how they whisper and they have this beautiful pitter patter sound when the wind blows through the trees. My journey uh, to Bend has been one of um, doing the most I can with the, the little I have. So um, I've started creating these tiny little pieces. I work in eight by 10 now, eight by 10 inch um, canvases and linen panels. And then this is even a five by seven inch piece. And I found so much joy in working small. Um, it allows me to maximize my time as a mother. If I just only have 30 minutes or an hour, I can work quickly and get out all the ideas that I have on these tiny little canvases. Because I would say my creative superpower is ideas. I just have so many ideas, so many inspirations and so many things I wanna paint that I just have to get them out quickly now. So working small has been um, just wonderful for me. And part of that journey from going from these giant murals and um, large pieces to working small has been humbling, but um, it's brought me so much joy.